Wisconsin and Whitewater. Our presentation today is by Chris Hennig, Art Professor and Art Department Chair at the University of Wisconsin Whitewater. Chris will be sharing Media Suitcase. This program is recorded, so we will not be taking live questions. The questions you do have can be submitted via email to Chris Hennig at the email that you see on the screen right now, uh, hennigc at uww.edu. So let's begin. Um, Chris, can you describe the course or courses that were central to the development of this project? I teach two large classes. One is called World of the Arts. It's for all freshmen. It's about theater, dance, music, and visual art. Those classes are large, uh, 90 students apiece typically. The other class that I teach is a survey of art history. And I do use some video and audio in that class, but mostly it's the world of the arts. In the world of the arts class, we discuss theater using examples of actual theater, so video. Uh, music using audio files of musical works. One of the problems that I would encounter during the course of teaching these materials is that it's very difficult to discuss and clarify things that come up in the video while the video is playing or that come up during a piece of music while the music is playing. The students have to stop listening to the music and start listening to the instructor. There was no good way to balance the two. So what are some of these issues that you face in your class that could be solved by emerging technologies? Having seen certain flash applications, it was clear that there was a way to synchronize textual information with video and audio. If we could get it so that people could listen to music but at the same time be reading comments that were cued to the music, that would be really beneficial, uh, kind of a talking people through a musical work uh, through text or uh, explaining terminology that might be raised in a video that uh, wasn't actually defined in the video. Um, these were a couple of uh, problems that I would have that I thought could be solved. Another was that I couldn't really see spending all of the time that I spent in the classroom watching video and listening <laughs> to audio mm -hmm. when students could be doing this really on their own time when they were more inclined to do it, when they felt like doing it, when they had the time uh, to really spend with it. The other thing is, is that it's really unfair to play a work of music in a class, period, and then test them on it weeks later having only heard it once. So this gives them an opportunity to listen to it as often as they want until they really thoroughly understand it. And by being able to use text to help explain it along the way, I thought that the experience would be that much better. So that led to Media Suitcase. Right. Uh, media Suitcase is a way of packaging together presentations that include either audio or video and any other additional information that you may want to include uh, for the benefit of your students. Uh, images, textual uh, support, whether it be descriptive text that's not cued to the audio or video, or actual text that is in fact cued to the audio and video. So in theory it provides the entire lesson in one suitcase. So can you show us media suitcase? The application itself is can be used by anyone, really. It's it's uh, you need to gather together materials that you will need for your presentation before you begin. The idea of media suitcase is that you come to the, this application with all of your media files, images, video, uh, audio files, MP3s. The sequence that you want to use for materials, any kinds of cued text 
that you may want to use with the timings already worked out, which means you need to listen to the, the audio or watch the video and then write down the time codes for individual points where you want the text to change or put new text in. Once you've done all of that preparatory work, you can bring it to this application. The application steps you through the process of providing uh, informational slides, uh, support documentation, then uploading the audio, uploading the cues, uh, then previewing it to make sure that it looks the way that you want to. And then when you finish, you export it, and it exports a single folder that you can then save to your desktop that has a playable media suitcase object or module in it. You can upload this into a course management system like D2L so your students can have access to it. You can put it up on, a, on your own server space and provide students with a link to it, which is what I typically do. Um, the, the whole idea is that it makes these packages mobile, and again, that's where the, the term media suitcase came from. I do have a couple of examples of completed uh, objects here that we can take a look at just to give an idea of what they're like. This particular example is of a module called the Cathedral. The Cathedral is actually a vid video module. So there's some introductory text at the beginning. Then we establish some goals. Here's what you need to learn while you're watching this module, things you need to pay attention to, things that uh, you may be examined on at a later date. And once you have actually clicked on the goals button, a new button appears, watch. And this allows you to watch the video. So the video in this case is actually streamed from the Madison video streaming server, uh, which makes it a little bit more manageable. Clicking on the play button starts the video. There are various parts. So part one has its own introductory paragraph, some background information. Then you can move on to part two, part three, and so forth. So students can watch this. They can come back to it. They can watch 20 minutes, go do something else, come back. It, it's very much more flexible. And I don't have to really spend an hour in the class watching the video. The video and the audio really work in the same manner. Unfortunately, through this recording system, we don't have the opportunity to see live video or hear live uh, audio, but I think we can actually scroll it up and you can see text appearing down below where I'm dragging the cursor. So as the video changes, different information pops up that might be useful to the student. Explanations. So a term that was used in the video but not defined. We switch over to a music version. In this case, the history of the chant should be obvious that I'm a medievalist. <laughs> Introductory explanation. Similarly, goals. Followed by listen. Now, the images that you see can be included when you upload your package. So as long as you've gathered these together, you know what, how you want it to appear. You've looked at some examples to see what the opportunities are. You bring that to the table, you go into Media Suitcase, you upload these things when, they, when they're called for in the application, and when you're done, you get a presentation that looks like this, hopefully. Again, various chapters, in this case, let's call them tracks for audio. And as we pull along, in, the, in this case, because there tends to be more text than can fit down below, text changes and you can actually read along in English what's being sung in Latin. So 
those are two examples, video and audio, both of which can be done using media screens. How did the idea for this come about? A while back I had seen an application that was being used to synchronize text between foreign language, in this case German, and English translation. It was meant as a tool for students to be able to read in a foreign language and then also to ensure that their translations were correct by looking at this synchronized text. I asked the person who had developed that application, first of all, that's very cool, how do I do it? Um, he helped me to develop initial versions of the audio and video. Um, we then modified it considerably over time, tested it, made sure that all of the different things worked. And eventually it evolved to the point where I rewrote all of the scripting for both of the applications as well as a few other applications that can be used outside of, of Media Suitcase. And the result is, uh, well, what you see before you. And how has Media Suitcase proven to be useful in your courses? In World of the Arts in particular, now the example that I've shown here, History of the Chant, that particular example is useful in World of the Arts. I don't use that in my other art history courses, but the cathedral video I use in, in World of the Arts. I use it in the very same module I use in my art history classes, both the advanced medieval art class and the art history survey. So I can use it across a number of classes, which is the case with some of the things that I have. The biggest advantage that's grown out of this is when I started pulling these together and putting them online and making them available for other instructors, they also started to use them. They're used extensively now as a replacement for in-class video. I spend more time doing discursive types of activities in World of the Arts now than I did before because I'm not spending my time on these. Now, another way that these are useful is you can't just show the video and say, well, I hope you guys get this and understand why I'm doing it and, and I'll test you on it in six weeks. Generally speaking, you'll notice in, in the case of the history of the chant, there were five chapters or five tracks. The same was true of Cathedral. I will set up in the, in the course management system discussion groups, each with five members. Each person has to choose a different one of the chapters or tracks to discuss. So I'll have specific questions that guide them through their analysis, compare the Byzantine with the Gregorian chant, how are they different, how are they similar, this type of thing. And then the students need to look at other people's responses. And students are responsible for all five, knowing what they are and knowing what the discussion was about them. So even though they may only have to answer one specific, you know, and analyze one specific Byzantine chant, they need to know about the Gregorian and they need to know what their fellow mates said about that because that's fair game for the exam. So they get an opportunity to actually not just learn about it through the modules, but then to follow up with some kind of useful application of the material in the discussion section. So as a whole, that's, happened, that's been very, very time saving for me as an instructor. Uh, obviously, we are pressured a lot in terms of time. One of the things that's useful is occasionally not holding a class, but to have an outside activity like watch the video, do the discussion as an alternative to meeting in class if you're off at a conference or need to do some research. Thank you. Sounds like it could be useful in a, in a variety of ways. Can anyone use Media Suitcase? Yes, right now the Media Suitcase application is set up for login by University of Wisconsin, Whitewater faculty and staff. If they have a net ID, they can go in and use it. However, if other people are interested in using it from other institutions, they can contact the Learning Technology Center. at the address that's currently on the screen, ltc at uww.edu. And I believe they will provide you with a provisional login uh, ID and password so that you can actually gain access to it. 
the application returns you a folder that you can download onto your desktop. So once you're finished using the application, the module you create is, is portable and yours to take with you. And just to clarify, this came about, at, at, or at least came to this point, at least in part, because of an emerging technologies grant. Yes, we, the, the development of the modules and the flash was an ongoing internal thing, uh, a project that was not funded. But once we had developed it and other people wanted to use it, the only way to actually write new modules was to hand edit the XML file that drives the, the modules. It contains all of the information that's displayed in the modules. That is easy for me because I wrote it, but it was not easy for other people to interpret. And so what we wanted to do was come up with a way to create a, an interface that allowed people to create their own without having to know XML. Um, that's what Media Suitcase became. Now in order to do that, and as part of the emerging technologies, it seemed logical. Here's a new technology that we've developed. We want to disseminate it. We want people to be able to use it. Uh, we saw that it could be useful to people other than art historians and world of the arts instructors. And so Media Suitcase became the centerpiece of a, an application for an emerging technologies grant. Thank you. Is there anything else we should say for our listeners and viewers here um, about Media Suitcase? I don't think so. I think that those of you who use video in the classroom, those of you who use audio in the classroom might find this a, a pleasant alternative. Thank you, Chris, and thank you for creating Media Suitcase. Well, thank you.